Is your video game getting bad reviews because of Lint AI code? Are you getting failed purchases on your web store because you aren't analyzing server logs properly? Is your home automation app failing because you aren't filtering user inputs properly? You need Good Guesser, the library that uses machine learning to solve all of your problems. Just sprinkle some machine learning magic over your regular code to make it better. Let Good Guesser's machine learning help you find all the errors in your server logs. With Good Guesser, you can quickly fix any user input errors in your home automation app. Good Guesser even works on blockchain. Call this toll free number right now to order Good Guesser for only $19.95, plus shipping and handling, not available in Hawaii or Alaska. With Good Guesser, you can sprinkle machine learning magic over your regular code. Hi everybody, I'm Conrad Barsky, and I'm the creator of Good Guesser. Now you don't really need to pay for Good Guesser. You can just go to GitHub right here and get it for free. Now let me show you a little programming puzzle, and it will tell you what Good Guesser is all about. Right now I'm in the closure command prompt. The techniques I'm going to show you here can be used on any programming language. Right now this library is specific to closure. But please, steal my ideas and write your own library for your own favorite programming language. Now, I wrote a function earlier called square grid. And all square grid does is it returns a piece of ASCII art. Uh, so it's just a list of strings, and uh, those strings make up an image. And that image consists of several squares, a random number of squares between 1 and 10 that are rotated in arbitrary angle and are of an arbitrary size. And so if I run this function over and over again, we can see it returns just a random Im image with between one and 10 squares. Now suppose you had to write a program that took this image and uh, tried to calculate how many squares there were in the image. Now if I had a week I could come up with probably a pretty good, uh, very close to exact solution to this problem. Now it could never be totally exact because of course sometimes if the squares overlap in certain ways there's no way to know what the correct answer is. Maybe I don't need an exact answer, maybe I just need kind of a close enough answer. So I could probably write a little hacky program that would come up with a pretty close answer in a couple of hours. This is what I call a hacky heuristic. Um, so you would see this a lot in different types of programs. You know, for instance, uh, maybe you're writing an, an art program and you need to do palm rejection. Your program has to decide, is this the palm? Is it a real input by the user? Or maybe you're writing a, a game and, and the AI has to decide if it's going to defend or attack. So you just kind of eyeball in your code. Yeah, you know, this might be a good time to attack and that might be a good time to defend. You might have some kind of threshold in your code that decides whether to do one or the other. So all programs have these kinds of little hacky pieces of code. Now I'm going to suggest that there's an even better way of solving these problems, which is what the Good Guesser library does. And I'm going to show you how to solve this particular problem in less than 10 minutes. Uh, if you're a machine learning expert, I'll tell you right off the bat, we're just going to be using multiple linear regressions here. Uh, what's interesting about the presentation that I'm going to show you is the uh, tooling and the way it makes it easy to uh, adapt existing code to be amenable to machine learning solutions. But the actual science here is, is not uh, anything uh, super interesting. Uh, let's get right to it. Let's solve this problem. I'm just, I'm, I just have a new file here called, uh, called example.clj. And uh, now we're gonna write the function that's going to uh, estimate the number of squares in the ASCII image. So we just pass in the ASCII image uh, first, what it's going to do is just print it to the screen, pretty printed, and then um, we're going to call the good guesser to uh, guess, come up with a good guess for the number of squares in the image. So you can think of good guesser as just this magical function that will, uh, where you you, it, you just put stuff in it and it comes up with a good guess. All right. Now we have to pass three different parameters into this function. 
The first one is just the name, and I'll, I'll explain later uh, why that's necessary. But every time you use good guess or in your program, you should use a different name every time it's uh, used. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is pass in the input data that we're going to base our guess on, in this case, our ASCII image. Now, the last thing is we can pass in one or more functions that can take the, uh, the input data and will return a number that will in some way correlate with the uh, answer we're looking for. So we're just gonna do the dumbest thing possible right now. We're gonna create a function called count pixels, and all it's gonna do is it's gonna count the number of non-empty pixels in the uh, ASCII image and uh, use that as a uh, crude approximation of how many uh, squares there are in the image. Uh, not an approximation, but something that correlates with the number of squares. All right, so this is uh, just a function that counts the number of pixels in an ASCII image. And now we're done. This is this entire program now. We'll be able to guess the number of squares in this image. Well, not quite, but uh, let's see what happens when we now call this function. So let me go back to my command prompt. And uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna call num squares, and I'm gonna pass in, again, just a random square grid and see what it does. So as we can see, it uh, pretty printed the image, and then it returned a guess. The guess was zero. So it guessed that there were zero squares in this image. Now obviously that's wrong. Let's call it again. Uh, it again guessed zero. And again, it guessed zero. So what's happening here is that it has a function that correlates with, that returns results that correlate with the, uh, the answer we're looking for. But just because you have something that correlates with an answer, that's not enough information to really come up with a meaningful guess. Because what you're missing is you're missing what is called a bias or usually the, the y-intercept of the uh, regression. So don't worry about all that. But in order to make this uh, come up with a real guess, uh, we're going to now open the file called numsquares.gg. GG stands for good guess. So this is a file that the library uh, auto-magically created inside of our application. And uh, um, what it does is, is this file has every example of the puzzle uh, that Good Guesser has seen in it. And it also shows the guess that Good Guesser made for each image. So you can see for this first image, Good Guesser guessed zero, and uh, as we know. And this question mark tells us that this is a guess that Good Guesser made. Now, um, what I can do is I can uh, erase this and now use my own human judgment to put in a better guess for this image. So in this case, obviously it looks like there's four squares in this image. So I'm just gonna type in four here. And then in this image, obviously there's only one square. So I'm just gonna type in one. Now in this image, it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven images, seven squares, I mean. Um, so those are three guesses I've made. So I'm just gonna save this file. And because I removed that question mark, Good Guesser now knows that these are human labeled examples. And Good Guesser will automatically watch this file to see if there were any changes. And uh, so if I run uh, Good Guesser again, you can see now it has come up with a legit guess. So in this case, it guessed one, uh, it guessed 6.47 squares. Yeah, you can see there's kind of one in the corner there, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think that's about six. It could be five, it's hard to say. Um, let's try it again. So you can see here it guessed five. Looks like one, two, three, four to me. So you can see it's, it's coming up with more guesses. This one's a little in inaccurate. It's guessing four. I would say there's at least one, two, three, four, five here. Um, so obviously we didn't give it a lot of training examples. That's why these answers aren't very accurate yet. Now also we can come up with a uh, smarter way to uh, approximate these the number of squares. What we can do is we can provide it with another function that correlates with our answer. Now, um, one observation you might make, uh, a simple observation about these uh, overlapping squares. If there's a single square, there can never be an empty space that has more than four uh, positive pixels next to it. Uh, the only time you can get a concave pixel that has five or more uh, positive pixels is if there are squares that overlap. 
So let's just count the number of these concave pixels in the image and uh, use that as another thing that correlates with the number of squares. Because obviously if there's more squares, there's probably going to be more cases where we have concave pixels. Hold on a second. I think I need to do a little better job explaining what Good Guesser does under the hood and why it helps to have multiple functions that correlate with the data. So we just wrote the count pixels function. Under the hood, Good Guesser creates this graph which has uh, on one axis the number of squares in the human labeled data and on the other axis the number of pixels in each human labeled image. And we can generate a point cloud, these little red dots, um, out of that data uh, for each human labeled uh, image in the GG file. Now what Good Guesser will do is then uh, approximate a line to this point cloud. Uh, this is just basic uh, linear regression. Now, uh, this makes it easy to guess uh, how many squares there are for any new image. All we do is we send that image to the count pixels function, and then here we go across and down to come up with an estimate for how many squares there are. There is, however, one cause of uh, error that uh, comes up when you use the count pixels function like this, and that is that when you have more squares in the image, it's more likely that those squares overlap. And when they overlap, they're not gonna generate as many pixels in the final image. So what you find is with more squares, it's gonna kind of flatten out. And that will make the results uh, of this linear regression less accurate. However, we can improve the results by creating a second function, which is concave pixels. And when you think about it, the more squares you have in the image, uh, when you add additional squares, it becomes more and more likely that concave pixels are generated. So the curve on the red points in this graph is opposite the one in that graph. The curves upwards like that. So uh, Good Guesser does a linear approximation on both of these, and then it melds together in a way that, that minimizes error these two graphs to come up with the final answer that it uses for its guess. So this is called a multiple linear regression. By doing this, if we just add more and more functions that uh, correlate with the data, but do not necessarily co correlate 100% with each other, we can get closer to our final answer. Uh, so I just wanted to explain that real quick, uh, back to the original presentation. Um, so, uh, uh, I wrote this function ahead of time. It's, it's pretty simple, but we don't we don't have to go over the function. It's just a pretty straightforward closure code. So let's go back into our example program, and we'll add this second function that correlates with our answer. And now I'm going to add that here as another function that it can call. So now we're doing a true multiple regression because we have multiple input uh, numbers that we're using on our, our linear regression. All right, so now I'm just gonna execute this, go back to our command prompt, and now let's run our program again. So uh, automatically, um, Good Guesser saw that uh, the, the number of parameters has changed, that we have more functions now, and it re-ran all of the labeled human examples in the uh, numsquares.gg file is now making more accurate guesses. So I guessed five here. Um, I see maybe three or four, so it's a little bit off. I guess two here. Now, uh, you know, the results are still a little bit rough because, uh, again, we haven't labeled more than three examples so far. You can see it guessed eight here. Um, that's pretty accurate. If we spent more time and labeled more of these uh, examples of the numsquares, that GG file, the uh, answer would get pretty accurate. Now I ran a, a, a larger um, validation test on this particular uh, square rotation problem. And uh, I found that uh, with enough labeled examples, the accuracy, it gets correct within, uh, within one of the correct answer about 85% of the time if you have enough uh, human labeled examples, which is pretty good given that an exact answer is actually possible because sometimes there are squares that uh, never uh, appear in the uh, final image because of the overlap. 
So that's really all there is to BootGuessr. So it's just an easy way to uh, stop using hackish heuristics to solve these types of uh, estimation problems. So what we have now is a uh, very simple file, the numsquares.gg file, with human labeled examples. If, if you just write some kind of hackish uh, way of calculating an estimate to this type of problem, six months later, when you go back and look at your code, you're never gonna understand how your uh, little heuristic work. Uh, so it's not very maintainable code. Whereas this is extremely maintainable because you have uh, very little code and then you, you have very simple human labeled examples. And of course, you could attach this exact same uh, good guesser tooling to a more sophisticated like uh, deep neural network uh, approximation algorithm to get even uh, better results. But the underlying point is that uh, this particular technique makes it very easy to add machine learning techniques to existing computer code by uh, creating this special uh, good guesser file and by making it easy to intercept data that you want to use for a guess. So thank you very much for looking at my presentation. Take a look at the good guesser library on GitHub. Thank you. Bye-bye.